This is the Chad Hasty Show here on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Hasty's out on vacation having a good time, and I'm in here in the studio with you today also having a good time. My name is Cole Shooter. I am a former KFYO news anchor. I guess that put me as KFYO alum or something like that. Also in studio with me today is Ron Orr, and he is representing Smokers Haven, a longtime Lubbock institution. In fact, they're now more long time than they ever have been. They recently just celebrated their 50th anniversary with a huge shindig. It wasn't just huge. It was downright huge. It was downright huge. And it was fantastic. There was a gigantic smoker trailer and everybody is making meat and we're having burgers and hot dogs and ribs and smoked pork chops and this and that and if you didn't leave just completely miserable you didn't do it right that's 100 percent accurate there was so much meat and then you can't forget those tasty jalapeno poppers we had Oh, I know. Uh, those were those were hot and delicious and made people cry. The thing is, I think that he's actually taunting me a little. Because I wanted some of those jalapeno poppers. They are posting them up on Facebook. Meanwhile, I, very fortunately, owning my own law office, was busy all day. And so, in between clients, I'd usually check and see what was going on. And I clicked and saw those. And I thought, oh, I need to get there. And I need to get there. And then things kept popping up and popping up and popping up. And by the time I got there, they were all gone. I only had two myself, but they were they did not last long now. Oh, they were the poppers that got away. <laughs> and I, I feel like a little piece of me will forever be missing because of that. It has popped off you, so to say. Mm, that hurt. That hurt a little. Well, Ron, since you are now back with Smoker's Haven after a jaunt up to Indiana... And I'll, I know it's the Midwest, but I'm going to call it Yankee territory because I tend to think that everybody north of Amarillo is Yankee, and that means you, Dalhart. I'm only kidding a little bit. A little bit. But so Ron did a big jaunt off to Indiana. Now he's back working for Smoker's Haven again. Tell us about what y'all have coming up. Oh, boy. Okay. So... Coming up, we have a big My Father's event, My Father's Cigars, which makes, you know, famous cigars like the La Antigüedad, the Cigar of the Year in 2012, the Florida Las Antillas. Which is my favorite cigar, maybe of all time. For the price point and the flavor, I don't think that it can be beat. Price point at 7 to $8 a stick. Uh, Cole, have you tried the Maduro wrapper in that one yet? I have tried the Maduro wrapper, but I think I've only had one compared with like <laughs> six boxes of the other. I've been through a lot oh, it's, of those. My father does not make a bagged stick. They do not. Um, the Jaime Garcias are absolutely delicious if you like a little bit of pepper. The Don Pepin Blue Label is a good medium body to get someone interested in cigars. So we have that coming up. The date has still yet to be hammered out, but it's going to happen sometime at um, around September 27th or so. Um, through the end of the month, which is coming up pretty quick, we're actually still continuing our Crowned Heads uh, promotion. So if you showed up during the event on last Thursday, you learned that if you buy five cigars, Crowned Head cigars, you get two free. If you buy seven, you get three free. Well, we're continuing that while supplies last until the end of the month. So you need to come on by and stock up your humidor. This is still a good time. All right, well, tell us about Smoker's Haven's history, if you can, and kind of how you got there and how the store has managed to last for 50 years. I know that in the store, they have a typewritten history that I think Bobby Curtis, yep. John's mother and the founder's wife, who also managed her own store over on 19th for many, many years, wrote out. And I read through it, and it was a good read, and I kind of hope that Ron can carry us through a little bit of the history of the store. All right. Well, I will certainly do my best. Um, so Smoker's Haven started in 1968. Um, John Curtis Sr. was in the wholesale tobacco business and then started uh, his own shop with a 50-count humidor. Uh, and then in 1972, they moved to the mall where they were predominantly a pipe store. With And if you visit the shop on 60th Street today, you'll see Four photos with just the huge selection of pipes that we used to have. Um, at the height of Smoker's Haven, 
you know, shall we say empire. There were four stores across three states. Um, but due to, you know, various reasons, we now have the one giant superstore in uh, the Quorum Shopping Center with over 1,100 cigars and copious amounts of pipes and pipe tobacco. Um, to answer your question as to what got me working at Smoker's Haven, uh, I had moved to Texas or moved here to Lubbock in 2013 to start my grad school at Texas Tech. And of course, one of the first things you have to do is uh, when you move to a new city is find the local tobacconist. Uh, be quickly became a regular at Smoker's Haven. Um, and then after I graduated from Tech in 2015, John needed work um, or needed someone to work for him. I applied because I love what I do. Um, and, the, you know, I loved it so much I wanted to come back. Um, and the one thing I can say as to how Smoker's Haven has been in business 50 years is without a doubt customer service. Easily. You, you walk in, you know, you become family. And that's one of the nice things about really the tobacco world is that you can walk into any cigar shop and you already have someone in common with the regulars there. You can sit and you can chat about smoking, you can chat about how great this cigar is versus another. And then the conversation just um, blossoms in that regard. And you, know, you get – I find Smoker's Haven is just the pinnacle of that. Oh, I would wholeheartedly agree. And you know you've actually become family when – Either you or JD starts making fun of you. Oh, that's – that's yeah. You you kind of have to – you you work your way up to being made fun of, but that's that's the goal is to be made fun of at Smoker Save. And, one, and it's, not one, it's not a one-way street. We whole, wholeheartedly encourage you to make fun of us as well. Well, and the employees, I will put it this way, make it very easy to make fun of them. That is true. Now, you also soon have a cut and light coming up with Hiram and Solomon cigars, do you not? We do. Um, we have the cut and light coming up the first week of September, I believe. Um, and that'll be a good. I don't know the date for sure on that one yet, but that should be a uh, that should be a good low key event. That one should be a lot of fun. I understand that one of the owners, Foad Kashuti, will be in. I believe so, yes, And And uh, I, I talked with him the other day, and he said that they are looking forward to it. I still think that they probably have the prettiest cigar band in existence, but you never know. The Illuminati might feel differently. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm supposed to be one of them. Never mind. Um, but Smoker Save to me has ki is kind of my home away from home. This is where I wind up going to relax, have a cigar, if – you want to engage in some libations, you can bring your own. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have a locker up there, and as do many of the other members, with a small travel humidor that's in there. Just keep a Bovita pack in, and everything's good. But I think one of the biggest things about Smokers Haven is they don't charge a membership fee to go in and sit down and smoke. No, we don't. The lounge is 100% open, um, the way it should be, in my opinion. Um, we do charge for the locker rentals, but it's 25 bucks a year, I believe, and that's prorated. Um, but yeah, if you come in and you buy a cigar, you are more than more than welcome. In fact, highly encouraged to sit down to chat with us. We also have cards and a cribbage board and very and dominoes. So if you want to strike up a game with someone, you're more than welcome to do that as well. I still have no idea how to play cribbage, but I, we do wind up playing a lot of spades, a lot of 42, a lot of bones, a lot of hearts. I mean, it's it's just kind of like a retirement community for everybody. It's, yeah, that's a great way to put it. It's fantastic. That is the fantastic part about it. Um, I also will probably wind up going ahead and going to break right about now. But when we come back, I'd actually like to go ahead and while I've got you here, discuss cigar regulations because the dreaded FDA is going to reconsider premium cigars and their regulations, and it may well not be a good thing. So I want to go ahead and discuss that with you while I've got you in the studio. You are listening to The Chad Hasty Show here on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. I'm Cole Shooter with Ron Orr, and we'll be right back. We are here to light your fire here on The Chad Hasty Show here on 95.1 and 790 AM, News Talk KFYO. Chad's out on vacation today. I'm your host, Cole Shooter, and I'm in with Smokers Haven's Ron Orr. One of the things that I do want to discuss is, um, this is not necessarily new news, but while I've got him in here, I'd like to go ahead and discuss it. 
Earlier in the year, on July 28th, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced a new comprehensive plan on its approach to regulating tobacco products that includes extending the pre-market application deadline for cigars. Now, this story comes from Cigar Aficionado. In a short speech, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, who was appointed commissioner of the FDA in May and just sounds like a really fun guy, spoke mainly about reducing the level of nicotine in cigarettes to protect the children. It's Always protect the children. That's what we're supposed to do. I don't care if it's a school board bond. It can be for the most ridiculous things as long as you say that it's for the chillins. It's going to be okay. That's why I need to get rid of cell phones for the children. That's why probably more people need vasectomies. Now, uh, <laughs> this guy, the commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, said that the agency will take a fresh look at the treatment of premium cigars under the agency's current regulatory structure. He also hinted that premium cigars could be exempted from the FDA's final deeming rule in the future. Okay. I just don't see the parallels between cigars and cigarettes. And that's because there isn't one. No, I don't think that there is. The way that the tobacco is treated is completely different. The way they're smoked is completely different. Mm -hmm. The way they're smoked is different. The way they're treated is different. The way they're aged is different. I mean, the way they're cared for is different. I mean, a guy is going to, you know, a guy or girl is going to protect their cigar collection like, you know, it's one of their own kids, shall we say, versus cigarettes getting knocked around in the breast pocket or the back pocket. And, you know, it's it's just stupid government overreach for no apparent reason whatsoever. It is. Now, Gottlieb said that they're going to open this new rulemaking process to engage with the premium cigar industry to better understand its products. Now, at least I appreciate that they're doing this. I mm -hmm. assume that it was because of the massive pushback that they've received. Yeah, there was a big uh, comment section up until – or a comment uh, time up until June 26th, I want to say, mm -hmm. where um, cigar smokers were allowed to comment and voice their opinions on um, certain aspects of the FDA ruling pertaining to premium cigars. And there was a massive you know, backlash against this. Well, now, to punctuate the agency's new approach to premium cigars, the FDA has extended its deadline by several years – this is a good thing for manufacturers to submit their pre-market applications to August 8th, 2021. Now this new deadline applies only to cigars that were on the market as of August 8th, 2016. So it, it the look back period is pretty short. However, under these guidelines that the FDA outlined, the products with pre-market applications already submitted to the agency can continue to be sold for the duration of the application review process. Now, the FDA says that new 2021 date doesn't apply to deadlines that have already passed or other provisions of the rule, including but not limited to required warning statements, ingredient listing. I'll give you the ingredient listing. It's tobacco. You're forgetting the tobacco. For a cigar. For a cigar. Oh, oh, I also, I forgot about the third ingredient. It's, it's tobacco. Mm -hmm. This is a difficult thing to figure out. Now... Many in the cigar industry, from cigar manufacturers to the heads of the cigar industry, took that FDA announcement as positive news. Now, uh, Mark Purcell, chief executive officer of the International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers Association, they're kind of the godfather of this group, said, This has been a long and complicated process, which is not over. However, we commend the objective approach announced by the commissioner of the FDA. In an interview with Cigar Aficionado, Glenn Loop, executive director of the Cigar Rights of America, which is an interesting organization, I think a good one, Loop said that such distinctive treatment of premium cigars in Gottlieb's remarks is clear evidence that he has received this industry's message from those that have reached out to him. Now, I want to discuss the issue of regulations on these small businesses and these retailers. How do, just at Smokers Haven and other small tobacconists mm -hmm. across the country, how do these regulations affect your job just in everything that you have to do from day to day? Well, uh, we have to prominently display boxes now or soon will with these rather ugly warning labels like you find on cigarette packages where it says, you know, smoking may cause cancer and things like that. Thankfully, they haven't jumped as far as in East Asian countries where they actually show photos of people, you know, with various um, medical ailments. But it's a 
it you take something that used to be gorgeous, like a cigar box, because a cigar box in itself was also a work of art, in addition to the cigar band and the smoke of the cigar, and that has been covered up with these hideous warning labels. Uh, moreover, these uh, the 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 application fees for these um, that you have to submit the application with the FDA that'll that that price increase will be probably passed on to us so we'll have to pay more to buy the cigars to sell them which will in turn drive prices up for the consumers um, it's and then of course we don't get as many new cigars in because people are afraid or manufacturers are afraid to push these push new cigars after this deadline in case the blend isn't approved by the FDA. The effects on the small business owner, the small business tobacconist, and all the way up to, say, even vape shops, mm -hmm. which are quite numerous these days, it appears as though, and I was reading this on the FDA website last night as just kind of a cursory glance, each one of those bottles and flavorings at different nicotine levels each one of those is a different tobacco product, and so each one has to be registered. That is difficult, and it's going to have a severe chilling effect on the industry as these regulations continue. And, and it would be the same thing for cigars. So, for example, um, my favorite cigar is the Oliva V, um, Lancero size. Feel free to come down and buy me one. But the Oliva V itself is released in numerous sizes. Um, however, each one of those sizes counts as a different blend even though it's all the same tobacco so the application process you would have to submit an application for the oliva v lancero the oliva v robusto the oliva v double robusto the oliva v number four the oliva v churchill the oliva v tubo the oliva v gordo or the 660 which even though they're all the same blend they're treated as different and it's just well and i think at this point with the level of information that we have access to Everybody knows that tobacco can be a harmful substance mm -hmm. and that nicotine can be addictive. I don't believe that cigars are addictive. You don't really get nicotine in that fashion from a cigar uh, in my view. Um, you can. It really depends. And this is one of the fun things about cigars being a handmade product. Uh, the closer you get to the stem in the tobacco leaf, the more nicotine mm -hmm. there is. Um, however... If we're going to continue on this FDA train, and FDA train in 2016, they released a study showing how minimal the health risks are to smoke health risks are to smoking two cigars a day, and that's available on their website. I do love that. It's one of those that at this point, it's pretty well known that there are risks, but there are risks to everything that we do. There are risks to getting in your car and driving down 82nd Street. I saw plenty of that. Well, I was a news guy here. Mm -hmm. There are risks in everything that we do. There's risks in opening a bottle of wine. And I tend to view cigars more like wine or a fine scotch as compared to, oh, I don't know, cigarettes could be a bottle of J&B scotch, something that's just posing as scotch. Or Gilby's gin. That mm -hmm. stuff is pretty terrible. Tastes like plastic. So that's kind of how I view these things. And so really what we're dealing with here is a premium Product And the nice thing about cigars is it forces you to sit down for anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour and a half and relax and enjoy yourself. And if you're ever in a strange city and you're a cigar smoker, go find the local tobacconist. Go find the local cigar shop and you will have friends in there. That's one of the first things that I do if I'm ever wandering around a city by myself. If my wife's off at a teacher's conference... I'll go to the cigar shop, and you always find friends there. I want to thank Ron Orr for coming in with us today. I want to remind you that Smokers Haven sponsors the Cigar Dave Show on KKAM 1340 The Fan from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday and here on KFYO on Saturdays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m.